Yeah, I just wanted to set up this game. Um, another one, I'm going to say though, my priority gameplay wise is probably going to be to try to put in a couple of turns of the uh, Transylvanian Gambit there, the Eastern Front scenario um, with Romania and whatnot in Dravelkrieg. Just because uh, the Paul Hederer interview with his game uh, is coming up with the live stream, and I was like, I would like to perhaps compare. Anyways, but this is a comfort food game for sure for me. It was the second game I got into Hex Encounter wise. The very first one was the um, uh, Patton's First Victory. Reason I'm not going to go into the whole nine yards of how I got to this point with this uh, this one, but it was due to the fact that a I watched the YouTube video uh, ga uh, game review. So those are extremely important. Uh, for people saying, you know, I've played this game and said whatever. It had a major in influence on me purchasing this game way back in the day. I just wanted to show you the original that I got. You can't get this anymore except through a reseller because Conflict Simulations Limited. This is part of a trilogy. This was the first one they did. Uh, like I said, the second game I started, and it was the beginning of the snowball effect for me getting into the Great War, and I've never, I'm not going out. Anyway, so this is what you can only get through a reseller now. It's, it was um, uh, produced by, uh, published and whatnot by um, Blue Panther, Conflict Simulations Limited. Uh, the owner, Ray Weiss, went through them at that point. I got these uh, magnificent, chunky counters. Um... I don't know what you get now, but you can still get this thing I, ch I checked today on Wargame Vault, and you can get all the trilogy. Um, uh, the World Undone, East Prussia, uh, Galicia, and Serbia, uh, all on Wargame Vault as print and play. So you can do what I did, which is, uh, you know, honey, I blew up the game. Uh, a while back, I used uh, staples, uh, and then... Um, Went and um, used a local supplier, a uh, game uh, component manufacturer, uh, custom game bits. And look what I can do, which is fantastic. So like I said, this was the second game I've ever played, uh, Hex Encounter-wise, getting back into it. The only other one, really, I would uh, say I was playing before that was metagaming the, the GV or Jev or whatever. That was ages ago. My goodness. I've, I'm a miniatures player. Was a miniatures player. Anyways... So I'm not going to do the full on about this, uh, all the mechanisms and whatnot. We'll get into that later on as I get into the playthrough. Um, I'm going to get back into it the way I did, which was uh, the second scenario. I've actually never even played the Tannenberg scenario, the full on. I'm only playing the Masurian Lakes uh, scenario here. And it's the first uh, Masurian Lakes or whatever. Um, it was a great intro. I introduced uh, Rob, um, my friend Rob, into this, uh, getting into Hex Encounter. It's based on the um, SBI game, uh, The Marn, which you can download from SBI um, da uh, resource thing. I'll, pu I'll, I'll pop it in uh, the description for sure. Why did I pick this scenario? Well, it's a small counter. Um, you can see there's no reinforcements. I used actually all the... Um, Optional rules are not too bad. It's <clears throat> anyways. I'm also going to say that based on a YouTube, like I said, a YouTube video, uh, Matt White was pretty positive ab about it. Uh, secondly, it did not break the bank for me getting it to Canada. Three, it seemed like a rule system that I could tackle. Um, and I'll just show you the rules, uh, the rule book quickly. You can see what I mean. It's not that I was like, okay, this is not too bad, man. Nice big font. You can see that. I'm, like I said, I'm not going to go through the full on right now. Maybe we'll do that later on. Um, yeah, I'm just, it was, okay, I'll give you a few. And I'll also talk about quickly the victory conditions. Just a few things about this uh, maybe a few quirks. One of these things, I'll try to look at it again. I abandoned it so quick. Rob and I both did afterwards as well. He was really happy that um, I introduced him this way uh, into Hex Encounter and we, we branched out. 
there's a lot of hidden complexity to this game. There's a lot of decision points. There's a lot of um, mastery available. And I think Rob and I did not clue into that until we started playing about, I think it was the tail end of the second uh, module in this trilogy, uh, the Galicia one, when we went, oh my God. Uh, we could start seeing how the the little pieces start, you know, making sense kind of thing. One of the major uh, things for this is there's double movement, potentially. If um, you're in your turn and your unit does not uh, do combat in the first uh, phase or first half or whatever of your turn uh, you can move again so you can do some crazy things so for example uh, this guy's got a as far as I know a movement value of two so I can move um, you know I'm not thinking about train right now is what I'm trying to say if I don't do any combat in the first phase so it's, it's uh, the first movement phase, first combat phase, second movement phase, second combat phase. So I can do some really interesting things. There's another component which we haven't used and we abandoned it, but I'm gonna start seeing if there's, there's obvious, it's there for a reason. It's this reserve movement. If I don't move all or whatever, and these guys I think only have one. Um, uh, yes, it's one per uh, army. I've got to take a look for the, the Russians. You know, I'll take you. I'll tell you what's going on generally. The Germans, I think, have five. The Russians can't use any of the rail. The, uh, the Russians can can cut rail. I've played this game. Trust me, man. Like, oh uh, well, way back in the day, way back in the way, a uh, day three years ago or whatever. Um, playing it. Um, yeah, it's a fun little game. Uh, well, we'll talk about the victory conditions quickly. Um, what else is there? Some. Uh, you have to stop in an enemy zone of control. Um, you're allowed to go from enemy zone of control to enemy zone of control only if there's already a friendly unit that way. Um, rivers, uh, you can't extend your, uh, your zone of control across a river. That's monstrous. Uh, line of supply is essentially, uh, if you lose it, you lose one movement point and your combat value is chopped in half. So you have to be careful of that for sure. Um, you roll low in this world. Um, so that's why, for example, I don't even see it. There's an artillery piece somewhere around here. Yeah, well, only the Russians have it, but it's down there. It'd be like a minus one to your die roll kind of thing. So all the train effects for combat are like pluses. Um, if you have multiple enemies in your zone of control, they have to be attacked. Um, they all have to be attacked that turn. If they can be, obviously, if you only have one unit, it's not going to happen. But if you like stack up or you know do stuff, so it's, you got to be careful. Uh, stacking is essentially three infantry units plus a artillery and a uh, uh, headquarters, if you wish. Um, headquarters don't do a hell of a lot, really, but still, man, I like having them around. It just brings in some narrative. Okay, let's go to the quickie um, victory conditions. I'll shut her down, and uh, you, you saw the old uh, map uh, off to the left. Yeah, I went, I went berserk. Well, why not? I'm an old man, and I was like, I want to, and I really enjoy this game. I really, really like it. I'll play this multiple times. So what is the, um, yeah, I, I just, it's, the rules were well written as far as I concerned. Uh, I didn't like, wasn't scratching my head every three seconds. Um, it's not half baked. Doesn't seem at all half baked. Uh, this uh, scenario for sure. I mean this module. All right, where do we go here? Mysterian Lakes uh, starts on turn 19. Yeah, like I said, it's the first uh, Mysterian Lakes, not the winter battles. So we're on the 7th of September here, and we end on the, oh, this is Redenkamp's army, right? Samsonov's already popped his head off in the woods. Uh, the German player only wins the scenario if there are no Russian units remaining within East Prussia by the end of the game. Trust me, that is not an easy thing. It is really, really difficult. Um, because the Russians can be 
uber, sorry, uberprex. It's just the way it is. You can figure out some interesting ways around it. You, uh, that's when I start using the train like a maniac and you cut rail like the, uh, what I'm trying to say is don't make me the Russians. I know the Germans have tons of, uh, attack uh, points and they can use rail like a lunatic it's basically uh one movement point uh to use it one movement point to get off unlimited use like or, or um movement across except you can't go uh through an enemy zone of control that's i think uncontested maybe i'll take a look doesn't really matter uh that's the main thing if you attack in the first round you become disrupted in the second phase of your turn um it's a damn, I, yeah, I love this. And this, I love being this uh, pain in the ass uh, side for the Russians. So I, I let, uh, well, I know uh, Rob wouldn't want to be the Russians anyways, but so it worked out perfect when we played it. Um, and you know, we're, we just went with, with whatever. Um, I would love uh, to play this scenario against somebody who knows Hex Encounter big time and could clock me, like smoke me like a fine cigar. I would love to see that. Um, oh yeah, I forgot to say, what are, what are the victory conditions for the Russians? Probably the, well, just keep somebody in there. I would assume so. And there's lines of supplies, Konigsberg. It's uh, limited for the Germans, it's 40, but it's brutal in some ways for the Russians. It doesn't matter. Well, it does, obviously. And a uh, line of supply, actually, of course, because if you can, if I can chop it off with the cavalry, they don't have a ton. And, well, they've got one that can, uh, I think it's this guy here. Um, I need to, um, I don't know if you can see it, but he's not allowed to activate until I do something funky, um, which I'm not gonna do, trust me. Well, I know what I'm gonna do with the Russians. Trust me, <laughs> you hang out here, you hunker down, and uh, you can actually do, so you can concentrate your forces uh, a little bit, I found, and um, just don't get greedy, but you can uh, tie some of the German troops down or cause them a bit of grief because you do have a lot of strength in spots, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, it's a, yeah, a, uh, Flippin' love that. Uh, yeah, auto retreat for cavalry against our infantry, you know, the, the, the usual. Um, oh, it says it's recommended the optional rule for replacements is not used in this scenario. I did not use it anyway, so cool. Um, I don't think the Russians have a victory condition. It's just basically make sure you keep somebody in there. Oh my goodness gracious me. So that's it. So I've just got to keep somebody. Oh, look how far away I am. Do you understand? Here's the border. It's insane. And you've gone how many turns? <laughs> it's like, good luck to you, man. Good luck to you. You're not getting me out of there. Same thing I'm doing downstairs with my, um, my narrative game. That's kind of funny. So how many turns we got? Turn 19 to turn 26. <laughs> You're not even 10 turns, man. That's hilarious. Okay, yeah, I'll take you any time. I'll take your money. Okay, hope you're having fun.